each time. So the first Yasin, because Yasin, Lima Quriha La Yasin, you get, and it's, these are weak hadiths, but, it, you know, I did something called the, uh, the, uh, Content of Character, which is a small book on prophetic invocation, uh, prophetic, uh, akhlaq, hadith from the Prophet. And there was some weak hadith. It was, it was a collection by Ali Mazrui's father, Amin al Mazrui. And I liked the collection, so I translated it. And, uh, and to be trustworthy, I, all the hadith that he put in, I put in there. And some of them were weak. But there, there's, there's an attack on weak hadith in our time. Weak, weak, a weak hadith is, is anywhere from a B minus to a D minus. Alright? A Hassan hadith is, is a B to an A minus. And then a Sahih hadith, I'm just using a language you can understand. An A minus is like a, 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 a Sahih hadith is from an A to an A plus. To 100%. Mutawatir is 100%. Al-Bukhari is like 98%, 99%. Muslim and Bukhari, 99%. Uh, Sahih Muslim, 97%. So, the, the, uh, a weak hadith is not thrown out. <laughs> Just like a professor doesn't throw out a paper that, that gets a D minus. It didn't flunk. It passed. And so when the ulama say it's a weak hadith, it passed. In other words, it's something that cannot be proven to not have been said by the Prophet. The, the probability that he said it is, is far greater than the probability that he didn't say it. So it's called a hadith da'if because it, it's, it, the, the margin of error is greater than in a hasan or a sahih. So how did the ulama deal with that? The ulama dealt with it by saying that for fadail al-amad, those actions that are virtuous, uh, you could do use a weak hadith if it was a virtuous action and it didn't relate to a hukum. In aqidah, the opinion of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi is the hadith has to be mutawatir. So the ulama don't reject weak hadith. They don't. And the, so this argument against the weak hadith is, is, uh, is a weak argument. And that is why Imam al awzai who is one of the great imams of the Ummah, who was as learned as the four imams in fiqh and, and, and the sciences of Islam, they said that he answered over 70,000 questions with qala Allah or qala Rasulullah. You know, I asked one of my Mauritanian teachers, how is that possible? He said, he said, come in su'ad yujabu bi inna mal amaru bin niyad. He said, how many questions are answered with إِنَّمَا الْعَمَرُ بِالنِّيَاتِ You know, so... But he was a master of Daniel and Hadith. He was of the opinion that نُصْفُ Sha'ban was ma'mul, that people should... إِحْيَا uh, layl is a good night. Imam Malik karihahu, like Ibn al-Hajj said in al-Madkhal. The later Malikis tended to, to consider it an important night. I'm sure, I don't know, in Sudan do they... Is نُصْفُ Sha'ban is an important some of them, and some don't. Yeah. So that's the way it is in Mauritania. Some of the ulama take it, the other ones don't. So it's one of those issues. I personally, like I said, you know, I, I was only, you know, recently that I uh, did anything on Nus Sha'ban, but I personally benefited on Nus Sha'ban, personally. That was my personal experience. So... But uh, in, in Tirim, they do, in the first Yasin, they make the intention of, of spending a long life in worship. In the second Yasin, with the intention of protection from calamities. And in the third Yasin, with the intention of being in need only of Allah and freed from the need, need of others. So getting your debts fulfilled, all those things. So that's a practice that the Habari Madu, the Ulama do, the Ba'alui. Uh, you know, again, it's based on the Hadith of Yasin. It's, it's you know, that Yasin is you get the intention of what you read it for. So if you read it with a niyyah, then you, 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 it has that blessing. I had something stolen, you know, from me years ago. It wasn't mine. It was actually some... This is a true story. You know, w when you first become Muslim, it's very interesting. You're hard. You know, it's a good hard to be in. Like Imam Zayd and I kind of lament those days because uh, it's just an amazing hard when people... Like, the, we have a guest here, Fred Wise, I don't think he's here tonight. 
Fred here? Yeah, but he's been here. People have been with him. You know, he's a brand new Muslim, and he's just like, you know, he's really in a nice state. But, uh, you know, I something got stolen. I was on a train, and this thing was, it was a, a really expensive, and I put it on the cargo thing. It was a stupid thing to do. But like I said yesterday, you know, I do stupid things. So, But I put it on the, the, the in, in the cargo compartment. So when I got to the place, I, this is in England, and I'd had such a hard time getting this thing. I was doing it for somebody else. So I get there, and I go in, and it's not there. I was just devastated because I had to go tell this person this thing was a really expensive item so I had to go tell this person that uh, it wasn't there so there was a Nigerian man there you know and uh, when I got to this place I told him what happened I was completely devastated I really was in a state of shock he said read 41 Yassins I guarantee you it'll come back <laughs> So I swear to God, I spent the whole night reading 41 Yasin. I really did. I just read 41 with total and utter belief in what he was telling me. The next morning, and then, wallahi, as Allah is my witness, the next morning I went to the train station. It was just there, right, in, <laughs> right on the corner, open. Anybody could have taken it. Wallahi. You know, so... When you have that iman, even if it's like a bid'ah or it's something, it's like Allah is so generous with sincerity. <laughs> if you really believe something. So, now it's always better to do what the Prophet Sallallahu did, no doubt. But Yasin is a great gift to this ummah from Allah. It's the heart of Quran. And Yasin has incredible efficaciousness. It really does. Mujarrab. You know, the, this is what the, the ulama in the books, they say, Mujarrab. It's been tried and tested. So don't listen to people who say, Bid'ah, weak hadith, you know. <laughs> Trust me, mujarrab. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakum Allah khair. Closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a gift. I mean, just, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hamdan yuafi ni'amu yukafi mazida. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Yuafi Ni'mu Yukafi Mazida Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Yuafi Ni'mu Yukafi Mazida The Prophet said if you say that three times in the morning and the evening then if you say it sincerely from your heart it's enough of gratitude to Allah but really be in a state of gratitude to Allah because this, this is just such a blessing to be afforded this leisure time to cultivate our, our spirits and our minds, especially before Ramadan, you know, because this is going to be an excellent preparation. Inshallah, this will be the best Ramadan that we have. May Allah give us a, a beautiful Ramadan. And a beautiful uh, Sha'ban is a great, we're going to be here. You know, a, a nice thing also about the Sunni country, this uh, Sunni country is they, they really honor the traditional days. Like the Nuf Sha'ban is a big night, you know. The big night. I'll tell you, there's a khilaf about it, which is fine. It's a khilaf. Imam Malik did not practice Sha'ban, Nuf Sha'ban. Imam Malik himself, he didn't. The hadiths were from the people of Sham. Al Awza'i considered it a big night. The Sham ulama of the Tabi'een all elevated Nuf Sha'ban. But it spread throughout the world, and the Malikis ended up celebrating it. So even though Imam Malik, it's fine. If people don't want to celebrate, that's fine. But Ibn Rushd gave a great qaida. Ibn Rushd said, if you ever have an ikhtilaf about the rahmah of Allah, always err on the side of rahmah. <laughs> you know, if there's a valid ikhtilaf, does the Qur'an get to dead people or doesn't it? He just said, look, just consider it that it gets there. Because it's rahmah. And wherever there's more rahmah, then there's 